April 16th, 2013 was the release of my first video on YouTube. Meaning that this video right here, hopefully being released on April 16th, 2023, means that it has been literally 10 years since I've been on YouTube. So for this video, considering it's not really anything major, I figured I would take some of you down memory lane with me. I just thought it would be a fun idea for a video. So aside from a handful of people actually knowing what my content was back then, the real OGs, they know what I was cooking, which was nothing really at all. 2013 didn't really have content. I mean, I wouldn't consider it content, but I have managed to procure some videos from way back, which go into a sort of philosophical route, one that makes you question the world around you. A spiritual journey, if you will. And it's all in this one video. What the juice? And I mean, what the juice? What? the juice. I feel like my 11 year old self was trying to tell everyone something. Something he conjured up in a vision. He felt as though a prophecy from a certain Disney cartoon would bring upon a journey that he would never envision that he would continue doing even into adulthood. But it turns out... <laughs> This prophecy also foretold that he had no idea how to make quality content at all. Again, I was 11, you can't really fault me here. I just went into some of my videos literally just winging it. Trust me, I had potential, but did not have the know-how on making actual quality videos. This was literally just me left to my devices, which at the time was a laptop from 2012 that definitely was not made for gaming whatsoever. Yeah, there it is, Lenovo G580. 15.6 <laughs> HD LED panel, flat type 1366 by 768. Oh my goodness gracious. Integrated camera, 640 by 480, let's go. <laughs> Pre-installed operating system, Windows 7 starter, home basic, home premium, professional. I can't remember which one mine was. I'm pretty sure it was Home Premium. I can't be sure, though. And Windows 8 launched second half year 2012. That's funny, actually, considering I got that laptop in October, but I n didn't use it on up until Christmas. It was like a Christmas present to me. But it never came with Windows 8. It was with Windows 7. <laughs> but yeah, that laptop got me through thick and thin. I honestly don't give it a lot of praise, and I honestly really should. Because without it, I don't even think I would be here or even continue what I'm doing right now. I also have some other videos to show you all. If you were around in the Minecraft community around 2012, 2013, you would know about a map creator called FV Disco. And I had made a video on one of their many creations. The Super Pig Powered Slot Machine. Super Pig Powered Slot Machine by FB Disco. So anyway, here goes in our first diamond, so let's start. It's very laggy. Hold up a second, I can do better. Super Pig Powered Slot Machine. Only few things in Minecraft can truly come together and be its own masterpiece. And here, FV Disco has decided to grace us with this. A slot machine powered by pigs. So here we got five diamonds. One, two, three, four, five. And then we use these five diamonds to throw in here. Hopefully that should change. Yep. Okay. And then it just spins. I mean... <laughs> I mean, this is great. Like, this is like some sort of like, uh, this is all automatic, by the way. This is all by redstone. This is amazing. Very nice. Very nice. Why did I think this was content again? You see, 11 year old me thought this was something. Absolutely no shame to FV Disco, though, because they're a game designer now, and I honestly wish them so much luck on the rest of their projects. Honestly, good luck with your stuff. And the last video here is kind of a glimpse into 2014. A glimpse into what was destined to be after that point. That, and I don't really have any other 2014 content from after this point, so it'll have to do, I suppose. Recently, I just hit 20 subscribers on my on my official channel all of you have been taking your time hitting that subscribe button and i want to thank you for it 20 subscribers i was very humbled by that amount at the ripe old age of 12 but does he know
Yeah, you see, I, I don't think he knows. He doesn't know! I actually do not like these 2013 slash 14 videos at all, and I don't think they reflect who I am now. I mean, it was just an 11 slash 12 year old kid playing Minecraft, because that's premium content, isn't it? I moved to a new channel, this channel, in 2014, and started producing Minecraft content around July or August of that year, and it would be the usual survival let's play or survival games or some other mini game from Mindplex or something. But nothing really stood out, nothing amazing at least. Moving forward to 2015 now, and we start getting a, into a bit more of a gaming mood, but still far off from the stuff I produce now. I like to call this era the Blaze era, going from 2015 to 2018, because the two aliases I used at the time both had Blaze in the name, the first being Da Blaze HD, and the second being Blaze, with a Q in place of an A, because, I don't know, I guess that was quirky at the time. In this era, it was mostly gameplay videos again, but sprinkled in between were graphic design showcase videos, none of which are up by the way. I deleted them because, well, I just didn't think they were that good in retrospect. But it was the beginning of something that I would eventually find myself pursuing, so thanks to Blaze HD, I guess? Obviously, not the best videos in the world. Yes! It's me! It's me! Woo! What? What? Nice 259. A nice 259. So let's get right into the news. Yeah, I don't know if I should be proud of this era either, and especially not during 2016, because I felt like that part of my life was the worst for many reasons. Some are actually deeply personal, and others... I want to f die. No! I mean, it wasn't all bad because around the end of 2015 slash start of 2016 was the beginning of visual motion design stuff on my channel. More specifically, intros. And you know the bog standard 3D text intros that everyone seemed to have around that era? Yeah. I made some back then. You're welcome for me adding fuel to the fire. I can't say I'm not proud of them at least. Although I am proud, nowadays I do think I did not know the meaning of color correction for my first few, but I definitely had found a style that suited. Until I decided to never do another 3D intro again and stick to 2D, because to be honest, in terms of visual graphics, I think I did a really good job on some of these. Better than some of the 3D ones, because at least it's somewhat unique. Though, I'm getting far ahead of myself, since yeah, 2016 wasn't terrible, but it wasn't the greatest either. Then came 2017. No more laptop. I was actually given a desktop for Christmas 2016, and I had been using that all the way up until 2022. You lasted me a good while, and I absolutely thank you for all you had done for me. PC specialist. <laughs> But even still, I was still doing my intro thing as well as occasional gaming videos. Even a short little Minecraft one too. I swear to God, if you die, I have to Just Alex just run and then he just falls through and he's just silent for two minutes. Ah, uh, nostalgia. But yeah, that was really it. 2017 didn't really have much to it. I mean, I had a new desktop, but I didn't really use it for playing other games. Intros took priority then. I think this era mostly taught me the one thing you have to realize as an artist is that you will improve given time, and you can reflect on all projects and think, huh, I guess I did improve. But anyways, 2017 draws to a close, and Blaze, as a gaming and graphics channel, is slowly but surely fading. But not if 2018 has anything to say about it. 2018 I kind of see as a revitalization to the Blaze channel, to set it straight on a path which would lead it to where it is now today. Commentaries. Essentially, I would spend 20 minutes talking on a certain topic, and I made a series out of it. What was that series? LTA an acronym for Let's Talk About. LTA was a decent series of mine. I was generally proud of how it turned out, though obviously I have nitpicks. I could have researched things a little bit more, the comedic elements could have been better, but again, hindsight. The only reason I unlisted the videos is because I don't think it represents my channel now whatsoever. Though if you do want to watch them, the playlist is still public. Just look through my channel and you'll see it. But yeah, 
Coming up to modern day, this 2018 content would persist into 2019, and 2019 brings in the current handle you see me with today, Leeson TV and Leeson. And then becoming standalone commentaries, and then anime commentaries. Now it's a bit more familiar, isn't it? And then came 2020, which I think personally was the start of the content that I produce now with the Ishizoku Reviewers video. While I did deviate here and there with the content that I produced, 2020 to 2022 is the most recent era you all know me for. All centering around anime, and I've honestly loved everything about this era. Your guys' support, the things that I've talked about, how much I've grown all these years, I've loved all of it, so thank you so much. So now comes the questions. Did I learn anything from these past 10 years? Yeah quite a lot. I feel like the main thing to know about being a content creator is that it is important to evolve and keep up to date with the current trend in terms of your own content. If there's ever any avenue you want to go with your content, by all means, go down that road. But understand that it's important to always experiment and try new things, but also try to explore how to make your content as engaging as it possibly can be. Keep with the relevant trends if you can, and I know that sounds kind of vague, but if you're making anime content like me, Talk about what's new. What has recently come out, like, say, Demon Slayer Swordsmith Village, and talk about that. Talk about it in shorts or TikToks if you have to, because trust me, they get attention. Or make a 10 minute video on it, because that might do the same thing. You never know. Essentially, just go out and do what you love if you have a plan in mind, and who knows? You might be the next big AniTuber or gaming channel or anything. That's all I can really ask if you have the same passions I had with creating content. If you have plans to do something you love within YouTube, by all means, just go out and do it. <laughs>